All right. This is a bit of a special topic in 1.4 because we're going over the what they call a, a library of functions. And we have a lot of different functions here on page 103 and some more on page 104 and I just want to go over these with you. We'll see that these basic functions can produce most if not all of the functions that we're going to come across and we're going to see how in section 1.5 when we learn how to transform these basic functions into most any of the functions we would be interested in. So first starting in the upper left corner here we're looking at a constant function when f of x is just a number and there are no x's to be found what we get is just a horizontal line that for every x value we always return the same y value and so this horizontal line is our graph the domain of this function well we're not dividing by anything we're not taking square roots of anything so there's nothing going wrong so the domain is everything any real number any x value you want you can plug in and you'll always get that constant value the range if you crush this onto the y-axis there's only one point that's going to be covered on the y-axis and that's the constant in this case they call it c so whatever constant value you're returning that's going to be the only thing in your range of course this function is always constant it's never increasing nor is it decreasing it's always the same value and it has an even symmetry the left hand side is the mirror image of the right hand side next we look at the basic line what they call the identity function whatever your input is that's what your output is you're not changing the input at all. Whatever you get as the input, that's what you get as the output. So whatever x value you pick, the corresponding y value on the graph is the exact same as the x value. Nothing's going wrong here. You know, no division, no square roots, so the domain is everything. And coincidentally, the range is everything, or rather not so coincidentally, because if you smashed everything onto the y-axis, the entire y-axis would be covered. So the range is everything. This function is constantly increasing, so it's increasing on its entire domain, which is all real numbers. And this has odd symmetry. You can imagine that if you turn this 180 degrees, you get the same thing back. Next is a quadratic function, the most simple quadratic function, f of x equals x squared. And again, nothing's going wrong here. We're not doing any division, so we don't have to worry about zero denominators or square roots of negatives. So the domain is all real numbers, from minus infinity to infinity. The range, however, when you square a number, you're not going to get a negative result back. So the lowest y value you can get from squaring is zero. And you get that by squaring zero all other x values you square them and you get any y value you want and you can see that by crushing everything to the y-axis and basically zero is covered and everything above zero is covered so the range is everything greater than or equal to zero the left half is decreasing from minus infinity to zero and the right half is increasing and this is even the left and right are mere images of each other. So this is an even function. Now in the bottom left, we have x cubed. Again, this has a domain of everything, all real numbers, and the range is everything. Crushing everything to the y-axis completely covers the y-axis. It's always increasing and has the symmetry that if you rotate it 180 degrees you get the same thing back so that means this is an odd function or it has origin symmetry 
in the bottom center we have the absolute value function whatever the input is you just return the positive version of that input so on the right hand side it looks exactly like the identity function because you're not doing anything to x because the positive version of these x values is just themselves but over here where you're dealing with negative x values you're stripping the negative off and just returning the positive value and so there are no x values that are forbidden so your domain is everything you're never going to get a zero denominator never going to get a negative under the square root and your range in this case crushing everything to the y-axis is everything from zero on up again we're decreasing on the left half increasing on the right half and the left and right halves are mirror images so that makes this an even function or a function with y-axis symmetry it's mirrored over the y-axis square root is the first function that has a domain restriction as we've said you can't take square roots of negative numbers you can take square root of zero and the square root of any positive number so the domain is anything greater than or equal to zero and that's the same thing for the range because when you get when you return a square root it's either positive or zero and if you crush everything to the y-axis believe it or not it will actually cover everything on the y-axis it's always increasing and has no symmetry you know, there's no mirror image of this on the left and if you rotate this 180 degrees it's not going to look exactly the same as this now if we turn to 104 we start seeing even weirder and weirder graphs here on the top left we have the cube root function there's no domain restriction its range is everything like its domain it's always increasing and it's an odd function it has origin symmetry so if you rotate this 180 degrees you get the same thing back the function 1 over x is also an odd function if you rotate it 180 degrees you get the same thing back it's always decreasing except of course for the one domain restriction you can't let x be zero so the domain is basically negative numbers positive numbers but not zero the range is actually the same thing as well pushing this the left half will get you the negative the bottom half of the y-axis pushing the right half to the y-axis will cover the entire top half but you'll never get anything to cover zero so the range is everything but zero if you look at 1 over x squared the inverse square function which you see a lot in physics again you can't have a domain uh, you can't have an x value of zero so the domain is everything but zero but the range in this case is only positive y values you can't have a zero y value and you won't find any negative y values because of the squaring the left half is increasing and the right half is decreasing and this has mirror symmetry mirrored over the y-axis so this is an even function or a function with y-axis symmetry you have various power functions which can do you know look like this or like this and the greatest integer function is a function we're really not going to be concerning ourselves with so those are all the basic functions that I wanted to go over because we're going to be needing them a lot in section 1.5